In this video, I'm gonna share with you five huge red flags that tell me that you're not going to succeed at weight loss so you can avoid them. Hi everybody, if you don't know me, my name is Miguel Diaz. I am an award-winning personal trainer and founder of MyDrivenLife.com where we help people lose weight and develop inner peace, confidence, and actual self-love. I have 24 years of experience in the fitness and weight loss industry, and I can tell you there's some people that right off the bat, you know they're gonna do great right away, and that will be another video. But sometimes there's some people that uh, right away, you can tell uh, this person's gonna have a very difficult time and, 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 and I wanna share those with you so that you can avoid them because those pitfalls are no fun. I used to be 80 pounds overweight. I, and I know how difficult it is to actually lose weight and, and do it in a way that it's enjoyable and sustainable and that it's permanent. So that's what I wanna avoid for you. Okay, so first let's define what being successful at weight loss means, right? Because one thing is losing the weight, a whole different thing is keeping the weight off and letting those changes also happen on the inside how you see yourself, how you see life. How many people do we know that lose a bunch of weight and now they're fit, but they're miserable? That's not success. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about the five huge red flags that tell me someone won't succeed at weight loss. Number one, if they lack a strong why. Imagine that someone just says, oh, I don't know, I, you know, I wanna lose five pounds. Okay, why is that important? Well, because, you know, two weeks from now I'm going to Mexico. Okay, and then, <laughs> so the point is not just the amount of weight to lose. The point is, why does it matter? A question that I often will ask uh, clients is, what's on the line? Like, who pays the price? Like, like, what is on the line if you don't solve this? How is it affecting your life? And what's on the line if you don't address it, right? Because it can be very different. Maybe maybe you have zero weight to lose, but when you work out, when you eat well, when you sleep well, when you drink your water, you feel better, you have more energy, you're in a better mood. And that translates to more productivity at work. And it translates to being in a better mental space for when you come home and you see your kids and you, you know, and how you deal with adversity. See, it's not based on the amount of weight to lose, but the clarity as to what is on the line. One of the reasons why people give up so easily is because we don't have a strong why. We just go, well, I don't know, maybe I could lose a few pounds down here. Dig deeper. So that's number one. Number two, straight up, is lack of humility. If you say, oh, I know what to do, I shouldn't need help. That is pride talking. Think about it this way. Olympic athletes who are the best in the world, the best in the world, have coaches. They don't just figure it out on their own. Often they'll have more than one coach. They'll have a coach for their nutrition, a coach for their specific discipline that they're training on, and another coach to, you know, take care of their mental fortitude, you name it. If them, who are the very best in the world, benefit from coaches, how prideful of us to be like, nah, <clears throat> I shouldn't need help. I know what to do, I just need to do it. So I shouldn't need help. That, in my opinion, is pride talking. Without humility, you'll never put your hand up, you'll never ask for help, so you'll never know more than what you know right now. You won't see your blind spots and, and you won't have a way of finding out because you're too prideful. So that's number two, lack of humility. Number three, it's always someone else's fault, whether it's your boss for being an asshole and you know putting three tons of work on you and now you have to stay late and now you couldn't get home for dinner so now you have to get some drive through like that or your kids are always crazy, they're always busy, they're picky eaters so therefore McDonald's all the time or it's your age or it's your hormones or it's your husband who you know loves you no matter what so I guess I have no choice but to eat the pizza, the whole pizza when he brings it home. When you're always pointing fingers at something out there, another situation, um, the pandemic, your husband, your kids, your parents, your age, your hormones, that lack of ownership will always bite you in the butt, always. Why? Because at the end of the day, you don't really have much control over what happens out there or what other people do. You have control over what you do, how you react to those situations. Maybe you have a difficult conversation with your partner or with your children and you set those boundaries and you say, hey guys, I'm kind of drowning over here. I need some help. I love you, but I can't. 
take care of you as if you were babies anymore. So I'm gonna need your help. So who is going to wash the dishes? Who is going to help tidy up? Who is going, like, we, we're a team here. So I need your help. Or maybe you realize by studying hormones that hormones cannot make you gain weight by themselves. The hormone doesn't grab the cupcake and put it in your mouth and choose it for you, right? The hormones may trigger cravings, but you still have to grab the cupcake put it in your mouth and chew it. Like you still have to do that. When I was 80 pounds overweight, I wish there had been somebody that would give it to me straight just like this. Number four, having a fixed mindset. If you say, uh, problem is I'm addicted to food. Problem is I need my sugar. Problem is I am a stress eater. Fixed mindset. You are putting yourself in a box and you're just, you're just labeling yourself. I'm, am addicted to sugar. What hope do you have if that's how you see yourself? If you've already decided that you are addicted to it, you are literally giving away your power. That's a fixed mindset. And this is part of what I teach my clients is how to change this, right, on the go. So in, so maybe you say it automatically. Uh, well, the problem is I'm addicted to sugar. The moment you say it, you catch it and you go, mm, wait, okay, uh, let me rephrase. Uh, in the past, I have had a tendency to eat sugar when I'm stressed. I am learning how to change that. You're not lying, but you are speaking in a way that leaves room for hope, that leaves room for change. If you don't believe change is possible, because that's who you are, you're addicted to food, you're addicted to sugar, you're a stress eater, then, then how could you possibly change? How could you possibly choose the right path when you're faced with stress or with cravings or what, how could you possibly do that? At the very least, you need to have a, a growth oriented mindset, a mindset that allows you to believe that change is possible. If you don't have that, not gonna happen. And then number five is lack of patience. You start, something goes wrong the very next day and you're like, ah, I knew it, this is not for me. Our brains are amazing. They're, they, they are so great at finding proof that supports our beliefs of what the world should be like, of who we are, of what works, what doesn't work. This is really tricky to change on your own. And it, it's not a matter of, well, do you have zero patience or all the patience? It's how much patience you've got, right? Because maybe when life is not that hectic, you lose some weight. Maybe you make some progress. Maybe you feel good. What happens the moment you hit a, a plateau? What happens the moment that things get a little bit tricky? How long are you willing to endure while continuing to do the things that you know you should be doing without getting the instant gratification of the day-to-day -day result? That is ultimately the kind of patience that I'm talking about. You see people say something like, okay, Miguel, with your method, um, I only lost two pounds a week. Whereas with keto, I lost 10 pounds my first week. But do we forget that we were miserable, that your mouth stunk like donkey balls, and that you had to eat different than everybody else? You forget about that. Not only that, you forget about the fact that you gained it all back and then some, because it was not sustainable. If you lack the patience, if you don't have enough patience to be like, all right, maybe with this I'm only losing one pound or two pounds a week, but I am eating food that I enjoy, I can see myself eating like this for a long time. I mean, why would I change it if I can eat, you know, bread, have some wine, have some chocolate, enjoy, you know, uh, going out with my partner for a date night or having popcorn or ice cream with the kids. Like, why would I quit that? This feels sustainable. Lack of patience. So there you go, my friends. Those are the five huge red flags that tell me that someone's going to have a hard time. And hey, no judgment. I wasn't ready to lose my 80 pounds until I was ready. So it's a matter of time. And that is why, in general, for myself, I like to work with people that are a little bit older, you know, 30 plus, 40, 40s, 50s, 60s. I actually like to work with, with those people significantly more than I like to work with a 20 year old. And again, no judgment, but in general, you don't learn these lessons unless you've been through it, unless you've banged your head against the wall enough times. So there you go. If this video was helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing so that you get notified when I upload another video like this. I'm trying to step up my game and your feedback is really helpful. So please let me know in a comment below what was your main takeaway from this and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.